Drip, drip, drip. Does anybody have a Kleenex? A really big one? Hey, look, you're here! Yay. For a little while. Yeah, I've gotta leave here shortly to go back to work. You're a weekend working fool. Play dead. Good dog. Cause Troy always stands there, and I always stand here, and it's like, yep. Mm-hmm. Don't tell you what, man. No thing sit here, man, all dang long, man. No thing getting that damn thing done, man. Damn. Where's my beer? Just had the interview with Ed Roberts of the West Coast Hunters Convention, the founder. Very awesome individual. We talk about uh, him starting his pro hunt, and then we also obviously go into the West Coast Hunters Convention and talking about it. Really good material. I hope you guys watch it because it was over the phone and I don't want you guys staring at my face and my no hair for real now. No hair! You could do a skit on the vlog where I buff your head with like a power buffer <laughs> and some turtle wax. Um, I'm going to put a, like a little slideshow in there of the haunt as it was, um, Ed Roberts' haunt, as it was last year before they redid it. So I hope, I hope you uh, enjoy that, and here it is. Hello? Hi, Ed. Yes. Hey, this is Troy. How you doing? Good. Pretty good, Troy. How are you? Doing great. It's great to, great to hear of you again. Good to talk to you, too. And I have uh, three questions from subscribers. Let's do that, then. The first question comes from Drop Dead. How did you get into the haunt business? Well, how I got started in the hotter house industry. Back in 78, uh, I was asked by a friend of mine to come down and uh, join them at a haunt known as Scream in the Dark. Uh, Scream in the Darks were uh, funded by uh, Campus Life. That's there were probably hundreds of Campus Life haunted houses across the country at that time. Um, I'm six foot five, and I was six foot five in my senior year in high school, which was 78. I'll give you a minute to do the math. <laughs> Anyway, I really enjoyed being dressed as Frankenstein and running around scaring the crap out of people. Uh, so much so that I went back again the next year in 79. Uh, but that year I also helped build the haunted house. Then in the years after that, I was, uh, I guess it would be classified as a home hunter now. I'm just, I'm just telling you that. My front yard and my parents, God bless them, let me do that. And my buddies and I, we would scare the crap out of the kids coming up for candy. During the summers of 78 and 79, I worked at Universal Studios down in Hollywood. Um, fell into the hands of some makeup artists there, and they taught me some of their tricks and tips. And then I have a friend who owned a video game arcade, and he thought it would be cool to build a haunted house in a vacant space next door to his arcade. They owned both buildings, and we opened up our first private haunt, which was Mayhem Manor. Uh, the year after that, we built another Mayhem Manor uh, down on the waterfront in Ventura. Um, and then in 1987, moved up to Oregon to work at the School for the Deaf and realized that after looking around Salem that there was no um, haunts to be had here in Salem. I went to the director at the School for the Deaf and asked if he would mind if I opened a small haunt. Um, that first year, the haunt, we gave, we, he gave us $400 to build and we used probably 4,000 square foot of the dorm. We now encompass over 14,000 square feet, and this year marks our 25th anniversary. And that's the Breeders' Digest version of, of how it got into haunting. It, it would take hours to really go into all the gory details. Uh, I like your choice of word, the gory details. <laughs> <laughs> Just the making asks, how much does it cost to build a haunted house? Our budget varied anywhere between um, five and ten thousand dollars, which for most professional haunts or haunts that are our size, uh, that's that's a very tiny budget. You have to understand that you know just one animatronic, one animation will cost you anywhere between fifteen hundred to to ten thousand, depending on what you want to buy. That, that that's just for one animation. Then you have makeup, costumes. We've managed to to get by on a shoestring budget for years. Then we got the makeover, and in animations alone or animatronics alone, um, there's probably, I don't know, $75,000, $80,000 worth of donations that were given. So 
So to start a haunted house, it depends on what your business plan is, what your market is, where you're located. You know, if you're in the middle of a major um, metropolitan area like, you know, Los Angeles, New York, or, or in an area like in the Midwest where haunted houses are, are king, then, you know, you can have a big budget. To get one started, you're going to need, oh, I don't know, between, I would say, minimum $50,000 all the way up to $250,000 just to get started. And you're going to have to realize that unless you're really lucky, you probably won't make that back in your first year. If you're a very creative person, you can get away with a, a minimum budget. But you also have to realize if you're getting started in the industry, uh, there are a lot of rules and regulations that go along with what, what it is we do, as I'm sure you're encountering right now trying to get your first pro haunt started. Yeah, it, it actually comes down to the, the haunt build is so secondary to all the administrative stuff that needs to occur. It's crazy. That's right. You know, you have building permits, fire codes, fire inspections. People think, oh, we'll just go open up a haunted house. People do go down to the corner market and find an empty spot and build one. It's, you know, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, gonna, it's not that easy. The last comment comes from Oddities, and it's not a question, it's a comment, and I kind of agree with it. Uh, they say, wish your bio information was on the West Coast Haunters Convention website. And I, I thought about that for a second, and then I added my own little thing, because, Ed, you're just as important as anybody that's coming to the convention. In the speaker bio section, uh, I will probably add my bio. Leonard Pickle and I are going to sit down once again this year and um, let people ask questions of us. Since both Leonard and I have been doing the haunts, I'm doing haunts for quite a long time. He's probably been doing it for five or six years longer than I have. Here it is, 12 to 1 on Sunday. Uh, so it's a brown bag lunchtime session. And then we can run long on that too if need be. We'll be in one of the spaces where we can just sit down and chat with people. Um, yeah, I'll drop my bio in there, no problem. You can also click on the About the West Coast Tires Convention tab, and it will give you the uh, details of why, why it is we do the convention. And eventually we'll be posting a uh, WCHF, which is the West Coast Tires Foundation, uh, link there. One thing that makes our convention different than any other convention is that it's a charity event. Just like my haunted of house, uh, it's a, the convention is a fundraiser for the newly formed West Coast Hunters Foundation. And this foundation, once it's up and running, will uh, benefit teachers of both deaf children and children who have autism. Uh, both very uh, have special places in my heart. So that when I'm no longer doing this, there'll still be uh, monies available for teachers who are helping these kids. That is great. You know, it would cost us as much money to take 12 or 13 kids as it would to just do the convention here locally. So being as crazy as I am, I've been called that quite frequently, <laughs> um, I decided to go ahead and do our own, own show. So um, we did the first show in 2009. We had 11 booths the first year, and there were probably 40 people that showed up which was, to me was a huge success. I mean, people actually came to our little convention. And then last year we had 32 booths and we had close to 180, 200 people show up. And now this year we're looking at a trade show floor with the potential of 46 booths. All right, as of today, we know we have hot cast. We have fright props. Dark Soldier Design, Chris Parody Photography, Effect Tech, Hot Wire Foam Factory, Ethereal Effects, Nightmares After Dark, Greg's Airbrush, Mike the Coffin Guy, uh, Distortions Unlimited, Necrotic Creations, Dark Light Precision Lighting Systems, Mass con uh, Contact Lens Store, The Button Zone, Crocker Creations, the Skull Shop, Hysteria Nation, Bon Charon, Contours, The Painted Naval, Worst Nightmare Productions, and Play Dead Effect. And Bloodshed Brothers and Hell Now have a booth. Let's talk convention also, other things that are happening that are new and exciting. Um, the schedule for the workshops is just about full. My goal is by this time in two weeks from now, 
to have all of the um, workshop spots full. And that would mean that we would have just about 40 hours worth of workshops and keynote speakers. They want to do a, a reach out to the home haunt industry, people who are home haunters, because we do have the home haunt headquarters. We have nine tables available presently for home haunters. We're not charging anything to our home haunters, um, but it's first come, first serve. <laughs> and they need to uh, speak up now if they want a, a spot. Um, so we can put them in there. So that would be like clubs and whatnot also? That's right. NorCal Home Honors, so, Southern Cal, uh, Fright Fest Northwest, um, anybody who wants to have a table to talk about their, their event. So like Fright Fest Northwest or the Fright Fest Canada, if they want to come down and have a table, talk about their events, by all means, come on down and there's no fee. The only thing they would have to pay for would be admission to the, train, the convention. So, you know, for 40 bucks, you got a table. So we've got the convention, and the, and the dates and times are? Well, the convention itself is June 1st through 3rd. However, on May 31st, uh, we do have Dutch teaching a, an all-day class, uh, very similar to what uh, Brian Wolf did last year, pre-convention workshop. On Friday night, there's the hot tour of... Um, Scream Apocalypse up in Vancouver and a yet to be determined other haunted house and maybe a facility tour um, of one of the big workshops where one of the haunts does uh, all their building. And then on Saturday night, we have the um, West Coast Haunters Convention Costume Ball sponsored by Dark Light Precision Light. On Sunday, we have the Hearst Car Rally. And one question that I have is, you know, what's in it for the home haunter? versus the Halloween enthusiast versus the pro haunter? Yeah, I've had this question brought up a lot because at the beginning, a lot of people thought I was kind of turning my back on um, the, the home haunter and the uh, Halloween enthusiast and really gearing more towards the pro. I come from those roots, like with the Bloodshed Brothers, like with you. That's where we got our start as home haunters, as people who just really love the season and have that sick and twisted sense of humor that really we get a kick out of providing an entertainment that scares people. The Home Haunter, that's why we decided that we have the space, let's provide a place where there's no cost to them to come in and show off their wares and what they do. Um, because a lot of these people that are, you know, the, the big businesses now um, started as somebody who was building um, their own props and thought, you know what, I can sell that prop. And now they're, they have a booth and they're out there vending and selling. Zach and Jeremy, the Bloodshed Brothers, said it, I think, the best, and they're like one of the most recent vlogs. It's not about, it's not 100% about the vending. It's not 100% about, you know, the classes are great. I mean, I, I love being able to offer these classes to everybody. But it's also about the fellowship. It's about coming together and sharing ideas and being able to sit down next to somebody that you've always wanted to meet or that you've, or you've heard about and being able to sit there and say, how did you do this? And you know what? I believe that one of the things that makes us unique is that if everybody that attends the convention is willing to share with each other. I'm in this to, to make money for the school, yeah, but I'm also in this to help other people become successful. Um, our, our goal as, as a convention also is to convince other schools for the deaf across the country to come out and to take classes and learn how to do what it is we do. Because like one person said, uh, standing in line at our haunted house, we had, you know, probably two or three thousand people in line one night. He looked over at me and goes, Ed, this is one hell of a car wash you put on here. You know, it's so much, it's, it's so much more fun to me to, to put together this event to teach my kids that they can do whatever it is they want to do. I've had students who graduated who've become carpenters, who've become electricians, who've become lighting techs for theater, who've gone on to become actors, who've gone on to become computer techs, and they've all come back to us and said, were it not for the haunted house, were it not for the things we learned from you, we would have probably never thought that we could do these things. And that goes the same for like a home haunter or a home haunt enthusiast. If you put your mind to it, you can do whatever it is you want to do. That's one of the things that stands behind, I stand behind my convention, that you can come here and for 40 bucks, you can take 40 hours of the classes. That's what, not even a 
you know, that's, that's so reasonable. I'm very passionate about what it is. My kids are still very involved in this, but since we've become the West Coast Hunters Foundation and we're no longer affiliated with the, the state of Oregon, um, it has become a lot easier for us to do the show. But that being said, it also takes a lot more money, all right? So if there are any sponsors out there, people who would like to help sponsor the show or help us continue to do what it is we do, um, they can get a hold of me at westcoasthauntcon at gmail.com, or they can go to the West Coast Hunters Convention website, click on Contact Us. Um, vendors, if you're, whether you're the, the guy who's you know, got a, a bunch of masks that he's made and he wants to sell them or whatever, whoever you are, if you're interested in vending at the show for $295, the most reasonable price of any convention that I've been able to find, um, you can have a booth at our show and you can help become a part of the West Coast Hunters family. Uh, we want, like you said, Troy, we want you to become part of the haunting family here in, in the, on the West Coast. So if you're interested in becoming a sponsor, we have sponsorships still available. We do, we are still a little short on the funding we need to continue with the show, but we will get there. Um, and if you're interested in attending the show, it's $40 for three days. That's 43 hours worth of uh, workshops. Um, there are a few make and takes and a few um, workshops that will have these attached to them, but they're reasonable. That $40 also gets you into the trade show. And then for, uh, a small fee to go to the um, Friday night haunt tour. How much is it? 35 bucks. That gets you dinner and the, the haunt tour. Uh, the Hearst Car Rally on Sunday and then the costume ball. Heck, it's 20 bucks if you buy your ticket now. It's $25 at the door. And that will be a, a big event. We're in a huge ballroom this year. There'll be a cash bar. There'll be, um, so Bloodshed Brothers will have rum shot in there for you. Um, <laughs> and then the, the, there's just so much. So. Sorry, I'm babbling, but I'm just really excited about what we're doing. Ed, it's been wonderful talking with you. I, I sincerely appreciate the time. I, I hope that everybody uh, goes down and gets a ticket and goes down there. Just like you said, unlike any other convention, it is smaller, but great things come in small packages. And, and the feeling of family right. is, is great. Well, you know, you're going to have a chance to meet Mike Crosser in person. Uh, Ed and Marcia Edmonds from Distortions Unlimited are coming. Peck Fright Props will be there. We have some big vendors this year for you. If that's your thing, if you need to look for that new something or other to make your home hot display a little more snappier or, you know, what whatnot, we have vendors there for you. Troy, I appreciate you calling and uh, taking the time to listen to me. Folks, I uh, hope we to see you. We'd love to have you come out to the show. West Coast Hunters Convention is June 1st and the 3rd at the Double Tree Hilton in Portland, Oregon. And if you have any uh, need to get a hold of me, you can through the website at westcoasthuntersconvention.com. All right, guys, really quickly, the vlog is going to be less than 20 minutes today. Subscriber shout outs Eldon2003, Easy9678, WSTL601, and Master of Fog Fluids. Hey, guys. Again, we're not reading everybody's comment tonight because, you know, we got to get this done really quick. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow. COC, time for yes? Yes, sir. Let's go. First comment. All right, first comment. What would you rather, only pneumatics or only people? People. Pneumatics. Oh, maybe pneumatics. People, I think. Both would be great, you know, because, yeah, you need people for better surprises, and you can't always rely on people to be there. Cinematic works. Just the making. No, I mean, where does the prop car go in the haunt? Because it wasn't drawn in the map. The prop car is out back, and I can go over that maybe in the next day or two. I can draw the outline of the stuff in the backyard. Nicodemus666. I missed a call the other day from Lakewood, Washington, and I was upset when I called the number back, and it wasn't you. Frowny face. Mm. I thought that I sent you my number a long time ago, but anyway, I was upset when it was a missed dial call from your city. It's all good. I know it will happen one day. And that's it, guys. Uh, thank you for everybody's comment. We did read them. So Keith and I have um, said that we're, we might go back and comment on some of the comments that we didn't comment on for COC. So if we do that, then we'll do that. We appreciate everybody's comment. I'm trying to keep this under 20 minutes. Happy haunting. See you guys tomorrow. Happy haunting. Peace. Sit, popcorn. Sit. Good girl.